Well, it's been around a fortnight since the launch of the English version BT4 and all we see right now seems to be Wargreymon, Wargreymon, Wargreymon. I mean, yeah, it's logical since uh, Wargreymon and Green actually had a neck-to-neck -neck race in the Battle for Supremacy in the Japanese meta. And since uh, the Green restrictions have already kicked in in the English version, Looks like the advantage goes to Wargreymon. Well, if you're tired of Wargreymon, fret not. This video will feature 10 BT4 decks which you can build outside of Wargreymon. Well, what are they? Let's check it out. This set introduced the concept of hybrid Digimon with Agunimon and Burning Greymon which isn't actually a Greymon since its Japanese name is Retramon, you can Digivolve onto Tamers. One of the decks which make use of such mechanics is Ancient Greymon. Probably an expensive deck to build since the core is a secret rare. It should get even more expensive out of the box in the English version as this deck is actually viable at launch. Despite not making much of an impact in the Japanese BT4 meta, Ancient Greymon should fare better in this meta. Thanks to the introduction of the first anniversary promos via the Power Up Packs. It kinda solves the problem of heavy Digivolution costs as it allows you to Digivolve directly into Ancient Greymon with just 2 memory. Well, yeah, it might get deleted at the end of the turn. However, this activates its on deletion effect which allows you to play a level 4 or lower red hybrid Digimon. Plus, if you digivolved it into a level 5 instead, it could also digivolve into an Ancient Greymon for just 3 costs, instead of the 5 costs as shown on the card. Since this deck centers around Greymon and hybrids, other cards that can go into this deck include Box Topper Agumon promo, which gives you a 2000 DP boost, SD1 Greymon, which gives you the extra security check, BT4 Agunimon, which allows you to digivolve onto Tamers, and Marcus Damon, which allows you to gain a memory when you attack with a Digimon with Greymon in its name. That said, would you be able to attack with Promo Agunimon, then digivolve into Ancient Greymon from its effect, then gain one memory via Marcus Damon? Well, actually no, because the card tag says when one of your Digimon with Greymon in its name attacks. So, it has to be a Greymon when it declares the attack. Back in the Japanese BT4 meta, I saw quite a few red deck players use Aldemon as their main attacker. It's not only because it has an extra security attack, but also because when there is a hybrid or a tamer in its Digivolution cards, it gets 4000 extra DP, making it at least 11,000 DP. Wow, that's kinda like a level 6. Shine Greymon comes back in BT4, but this time it is in red. But that doesn't mean you have to throw away your yellow Shine Greymon deck. In fact, you can just throw the new cards right into your yellow Shine Greymon deck, as it also digivolves from yellow, and gain an extra security check every time you suspend a yellow or red tamer. That said, if you have more than one yellow tamer in play and digivolve another Digimon into BT2 Shine Greymon, you will just gain one security attack as it counts as one instance. However, if you have four BT4 Taikamiya in play and manage to reduce an opponent's DP to zero, you get security attack plus four as each tamer is resolved one by one. Well, that is if the DP reduction is not from Shine Greymon. Since it's mandatory to suspend all tamers with Shine Greymon's effect, you cannot choose to not suspend Tai when you digivolve into it. Hence, you lose its effect. If you prefer a red base, fret not. BT4 Shine Greymon still gets a lot of support from red in the form of Box Topper Promo Agumon, which gives it a 2000 DP boost. There is also Marcus Damon, which gives you an extra memory when you attack with a Digimon with Greymon in its name. And there is also Red Rice Greymon. Yeah, shockingly enough, it is the SR in this set instead of Shine Greymon. But I actually think it's fair enough because this card is really good. Just like Sylphimon in BT3, it is also considered as a yellow Digimon during your turn. 
which means you can fit it into your 1.5 Shine Greymon deck without any problems. By using it to Digiburst, you get to play a yellow or red Tamer for free. This card has an advantage over the BT2 Rice Greymon when you choose to camp in the breathing area, as BT2 Rice Greymon's effect will not activate if you digivolve it in the breeding area. However, for this card, you can just digivolve into it in the breeding area, move it out the next turn, then digiburst for the free tamer. It also has an imperative effect, which reduces your opponent's Digimon's DP by 2000. So if your opponent has that pesky 6000 DP blocker, and you are digivolving into Shine Greymon, you actually don't have to apply the DP reduction to it twice. You can just reduce its DP by 4000, then delete it with the further 2000 DP reduction when you attack. The other 4000 DP can be used to reduce the DP of other Digimon instead. So, Yellow Shine or Red Shine? Which side are you on? Another product of Bandai introducing hybrid Digimon into the game, Ancient Garurumon allows you to unsuspend Digimon with Garuru in its name or hybrid in its type. Yes, that includes itself as well. Similarly to Ancient Greymon, it was a disappointment in Japanese regions during BT4. Thankfully, just like Ancient Greymon, the first anniversary power-up pack is here to give it a boost. It also has an on-deletion effect which allows you to play a level 4 or lower blue hybrid, which will go well with Lobomon's Warp Digivolve effect. That's it, Lobomon's effect is slightly different. When you Digivolve into Lobomon, you are able to further Digivolve into Ancient Garurumon for only one cost. Yes. It gets deleted in the end, but hey yo, if you have BT1 Gomamon under it, you can actually earn one memory when it deletes itself. And if your memory goes back to zero thanks to that, it will still be your turn. Pretty awesome, huh? Too bad Ancient Garurumon can only be deleted once, or else it will be some pretty mad infinite loop combo. <laughs> Since Ancient Garurumon unsuspends two Digimon with Garuru in their name or hybrid in their type when it attacks, it is a great idea to add Digimon with Garurumon in their names and hybrid type Digimon to finish up your deck. Green OTK is one of my favorite decks in BT5. Wait, BT5? Yep. You didn't hear me wrong, I even made a video about it. Basically this deck wasn't really viable in Japanese BT4 meta, hence you seldom saw it back then, although it did manage to steal a tournament win or two. But the introduction of the first anniversary promo Palmon changed all that. This deck is now a legit contender in this meta. The basis of this deck is to ramp into promo Grand Kuwagamon, Digiburst once, Hit for 2 security, then Digiverse again for the second security attack boost, and Digivolve into Chaosmon, where you can swing for 3 security if your opponent has a Digimon in their battle area. Seems all well and good until you realize that Grand Kuwagamon only has 11,000 DP, which means literally hitting almost any level 6 in the security would spell disaster for it. Well, that's where Promo Palmon comes to save the day. By digibursting out Palmon using Grand Kuwagamon's digiburst effect, you gain jamming for the turn. Hence, you won't have to be worried about Grand Kuwagamon hitting any big cards in the security. Chaosmon would also be safe, as having jamming would mean it would basically survive when checking other level 7s in security. Other cards which can go into this deck include Low Cost Vanillas as well as Nihokmon as your removal option. You can also put in Mega Gargomon which is pretty useful to buy a turn, especially when your opponent has an unsuspended Chaosmon Boulder Arm which might cause havoc. Is Promo Palmon too expensive? No worries, there are other alternatives as well. Green Digiburst was a tier 1 deck back in Japanese BT4 meta. Of course, it kinda got nerfed thanks to the green restriction, but nevertheless, it is still a solid contender. It is a more control oriented deck compared to the previous one, and revolves around building up to Nihokmon, which helps with board control. Mega Gargomon is also often used as a secondary mega to Nihokmon to further hold your opponent back as your opponent would not be able to unsuspend during their unsuspend phase, delaying their attacks by a turn. 
And in your next turn, you can just slap on an Ehawkmon and hasta la vista, baby! As one of the hottest decks heading into BT4 last year, the Brigade was deemed as another disappointment in black after the meta started to form. The main point of this deck is to rush with Commandramon and build up your trash with them. Then play Dark Dramon for cheap! With Rush, Dark Dramon is able to bypass the rule which prevents your Digimon from attacking the turn it is played. That said, as Dark Dramon gains memory for every D Brigade in your trash, it can actually be thwarted by a memory blocker such as Terrimon, Guzzimon, and Chumon. The core of this deck is simple, just load as many D Brigades as you can. So with 3 Command Dramon, Tank Dramon, Seuss Dramon, and Dark Dramon, you have a total of 24 D Brigade. To buff it up, you can play some low cost Vanillas and even Chaos Mon to go for the kill. However, do note, if you just played Dark Dramon this turn, you may not digivolve into Chaos Mon to attack. Many people actually mistake Summoning Sickness as a condition in this game and mistakenly think that Rush removes that condition. In reality, it is actually a rule. And as mentioned previously, having Rush allows you to bypass that rule. Hence, as Rush is not carried over to Chaos Mon, you may not attack with Chaos Mon, regardless of whether or not you attack with Dark Dramon before digivolving. Another way to fill up this deck is by building up a mixed deck, combining D Brigade with other black strategies. I've actually seen a few, but that doesn't really seem like the best idea, as while you have an alternative for when either one of your plans don't work, there are times when you actually split your resources between them and get nowhere. When I first saw Blastmon back in December last year, I basically wrote it off and felt that it was quite a silly card. I mean, yeah, it might have 13,000 DP, it might have an extra security attack, but a card that basically turns every single unsuspended Digimon on the opponent's side into a blocker? Nah, what's the use of the security attack boost, right? But oh boy, I was so wrong. The introduction of the first anniversary promos brought a Sunarizamon. Sunarizamon is the perfect partner for Blastmon. It grants piercing to all your black Digimon with 13,000 DP in the battle area. Now, who would dare to redirect a piercing Blastmon? Cards like Gogmamon can also boost your Digimon's DP past 13,000, giving you even more ways to abuse Sunarizamon's effect. And also final Zubagon Punch, which makes your Blastmon into a 60,000 DP blocker with reboot and can still perform 3 checks. Now, that's what I call scary! <laughs> that said, you will have to make sure your Sunarizamon is not removed from the battle area, or else it won't work. Options seem inseparable with purple. Back in 1.0, Lilith Toolbox was a pretty popular deck. This time, BT4 brings us even more option support in the form of Metal Garurumon. Metal Garurumon allows you to play an option that is 7 cores or less for free when you digiburst. As it only requires you to digiburst out 2 digivolution cards, you can basically play 2 options for free. The most common option cards are Trump Sword and Nailbone. Trump Sword basically deletes any of your opponent's unsuspended Digimon, while Nailbone allows you to flood your board by playing 1 level 3 and 1 level 4 Digimon each. You can play up to 2 or 4 of each option, with the sweet spot being 6 in total. As the main aim of this deck is to hit Metal Garurumon, its lower levels are mostly low cost ram cards such as Meromon, Skull Meromon, BT2 Mutismon, and Starter Devimon. Other common cards that I put in to fill in the blanks include Evilmon for a higher DP blocker which is good for Nail Bone, Lady Devimon which allows you to delete a level 3 when you use an option, and Devimon, which is pretty useful for removing big cards which are suspended due to retaliation. It is also common to see 2 Millennimon and 2 to 3 Mad Ishida. As for the secondary mega, there are several different choices. That said, the most popular options are Lilithmon and Boltmon. Lilithmon provides synergy with Metal Garurumon, as you can gain memory even when using options via Metal Garurumon's Digiburst effect. While Boltmon provides a low cost, high DP vanilla to ramp up to Millennium Mon. You can also try Anubismon, as it has synergy with Nail Bone. 
This deck made its way into tier 1 in Japanese BT3 meta. However, it kinda dropped down tiers in BT4. Nevertheless, it should still be a pretty fun deck to play with. Want to utilize Anubismon but reluctant to splurge on a playset of Metal Garurumon promos? Well, fret not. You can still play it without the Metal Garurumon Nailbow combo by building a Purple Rush deck. Well, what is Purple Rush? Basically, Purple Rush decks are different from the other Rush decks, such as Rookie Rush and Baby Blue Rush, because Rush in this deck's name actually refers to the effect which allows you to attack on the turn you play that Digimon. In order for your Digimon to gain Rush via Anubismon, you need a Digimon like Mastemon. Mastemon has been quite a fan favorite with the English community, and it receives some extra support in the set. Apart from Anubismon, which allows the Digimon it calls out from the trash to gain Rush, there is also the first anniversary promo Gatomon. It not only potentially allows you to regain the security trash by Mastemon, but it also works as a blocker as Mastemon is a purple Digimon. Mastemon would also allow you to play Digimon such as BT2 Devimon, and with Anubismon in play, you can actually use Devimon to remove any of your opponent's big cards that are suspended, right after it gets played. Other than Mastemon, there is also BT2 Metal Garurumon, which plays a level 3 Digimon from the trash, but you don't see it that often. Well, what if you want to build a Purple Rush deck? But think that two lines of level 6 Digimon is quite a hassle? Well, no worries. There is Cerberusmon Werewolf Mode. Similarly to Dark Dramon, Cerberusmon Werewolf Mode has an on play effect, which allows it to gain memory. Except that instead of filling your trash with a certain Digimon, you just have to delete a Cerberusmon in your battle area. For now, only two cards are able to proc that effect, as you need to have the exact name. That's it! This would also mean that you would be able to play Cerberus Mon Werewolf Mode in a blue deck as well. However, do watch out for lurking memory blockers as having them on the field would totally ruin your strategy. Dun Devimon is a pretty new character in the digital world. It was introduced in last year's 2020 Digimon Adventures anime, and comic book fans would notice its similarities with a certain comic book character. Well, turns out that Kenji Watanabe confirmed that the design of Dun Devimon was inspired by comic book characters Venom and Spawn. Well, enough of the Digimon trivia, let's look at how to build a Dun Devimon deck. Back in the Japanese BT4 meta, Dun Devimon was very often used as a secondary mega, as its effects are pretty useful. It allows you to trash your opponent's security once every turn when a card is removed from your security stack. It also forces your opponents to trash two cards from your hand when it gets deleted. But then, thanks to the first anniversary promo Demi Devimon, you can now build a Devimon team deck with Dun Devimon at the core. Basically, promo Demi Devimon has an inherited effect which allows you to play Dun Devimon for free if you have 7 or more Digimon with Devimon in their names in your trash. So, are there enough cards to build a Devimon team deck? Well, you have 4 different Devi Devimon, 4 different Devimon, Lady Devimon, Neo Devimon, and Dun Devimon. That's enough to make a full-fledged Devimon team deck. Other cards that can complement this deck includes BT2 Impmon, which can help milling your Devimon, and BT2 Gabumon, which not only increases your draw power, but also helps you trash more Devimon. And not forgetting the very useful Chimeramon, which can help delete your other Devimon in your battle area and board control. You can also add in 2 BT2 Matt Ishida to help pull out Dun Devimon in case you accidentally mill it out. Finally, for options, Death Claw and Night Raid are quite commonly used. You can even use Back for Revenge on Dun Devimon so that when it gets deleted, it will come back. But do be mindful on how you resolve the on deletion effects. Make sure you resolve Dun Devimon's on deletion effect first and have your opponent trash 2 cards from their hand. If you bring back Dun Devimon first, it would not be able to resolve the other on deletion effect, as on deletion effects require the card to be in the trash. Well, these decks aren't necessarily tier 1 and might not actually give Wargreymon a run for its money, 
but I still feel that they are pretty viable and well, can add spice to the meta. <laughs> so how many of these decks have you tried? Do let me know in the comments how they work for you or if you have better deck cores. Yup, just hit me up in the comment section below. So that's all from me today. Thank you for watching everyone and hope you enjoy the game. See ya!